Hey folks, welcome to the Mike Lopez TV show. I'm your host, AC Mike. We'll bring you all things Atlantic City and our local region, politics, sports, dining, entertainment, and so much more. Our guest for today is Senator Vince Palestina, New Jersey's Legislative District 2. So stick around, we'll be right back. Hey, folks, welcome back to the show. Let's get started with our guest for today, Senator Vince Palestina, New Jersey's latest legislative district, too. Welcome to the show, sir. Thanks, Mike. Great to be here. Appreciate you being here. Listen, welcome back. First of all, I want to thank you for coming out, taking the time. Uh, let's get started. Jump right in it. Tell us a little bit uh, how the last two years have been for you, you know, rounding it out. I know that's a whole lot for this little bit of time we got, but go ahead, sir. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, I really uh, thank the people for giving me the opportunity to, to serve uh, as Atlanta County Senator. Uh, we have had so many accomplishments, Mike, when you think about everything that has been done from the Atlanta County prosecutor, five superior court judges, to administrative law judges, appointments to places like Stockton University, which have been fabulous to get people actually on the board of trustees. I heard somebody call it the other day, Princeton in the Pines. So now I use the moniker for Stockton, Princeton in the Pines. Love it. Uh, but appointments there and CRDA and SJTA, so people in place everywhere. And then, you know, some of the, the funding that we've been able to obtain and, and uh, invest in, when you think about Stockton University and you think about Atlantic Care and the aviation research facility, of course, our tourism industry, you know, all uh, investments that we have made. We have done things to like get uh, traffic improvements done at the old Shore Mall area, you know, where, the, where Boscov's is. So you're going to see some improvements there to improve the traffic situation there. It's just been a great time working with Don Guardi and Claire Swift, uh, just focusing on Atlantic County and trying to figure out how we can get things done to create opportunities for people here. And that's what it's all about, talking about Don Guardi. Had the privilege of working with him a few times, two times actually, where his run for mayor is a successful one. And coming up just a little short, guy uh, pretty much goes pretty much anywhere, doesn't he? Just good he people does. out there and... Yeah, just fabulous, fabulous person. You know, Don is just a humanitarian. He just cares about people, and he will literally do anything, go anywhere, meet with anyone, which is great for our team. You know, Claire Swift and I. Exactly. Yeah. Businesses, families, we're a little busier, but Don has the time being retired right now to be able to go out there, and he literally will do anything for anyone. Just, you know, got a great heart, fabulous person. Right. You know, we just have a great team. We work along great together and really like each other and really like what what we have done for the people of Atlanta County. And your other partner, Claire Swift, love having her on the radio and as well as here, brings the kids along and whatnot. We had such a great time. Awesome team. Talk to us about that. I know you did. You touched on it. Just the three of you, just how you work together, because it's so important. I call it a team. I mean, just it's it's strong in the sense of, you know, we're dealing with over 250,000 people. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, it's about that, about 230,000 per right. district. So, and that is the thing. Politics, I always say, is a team sport. You know, it's not an individual sport, although some people try to treat it like an individual sport, but we here in Atlanta County are a team. And Claire, you know, background as a deputy attorney general, mother, lawyer, that brings a different perspective than Don and I. Me as an engineer, Don being a business administrator in his career and, you know, special improvement district, we complement each other so well and come from different backgrounds, different perspectives, but at the same time have developed such a great team and such an ability to work together to help people in Atlantic County. So I can't thank them enough. You know, when you get into this spot, you need people okay. there are going to have your back, and they have been there from the start and uh, couldn't uh, ask for anything better, frankly, for the residents of Atlantic County than to have Don and Claire there. We're definitely blessed. Listen, the NARTP progress, talk to us about that. Great, uh, great opportunities here for the NARTP, National Aviation Research Technical Park, you know, formerly the Aviation Research Park. Uh, we had a groundbreaking there last Thursday, so a week ago from when we sit here today. So, you know, groundbreaking for the second building, which is going to be about a 40,000 square foot building. It'll complement building one, which is existing. 
ton of interest uh, for people to want to go into the building, you know, and, and that facility now, you have partnerships with the FAA, you have partnerships, of course, with, you know, the Air Force, you have partnerships with the SJTA, you have NASA in that building, uh, and including to some private entities that are in that building. And so building one is filled up, building two, ton of interest from people who want to be involved in the aviation industry here because of the connection to the FAA. Um, so we have something here, you know, when you think about South Jersey, we've been dependent on tourism for way mm -hmm. too long. But when you think about South Jersey, you have water on three sides. You know, if you go east, you got water, south, you got water, a little west, go, we got water. But we do have the federal military base, the William J. Hughes Technical Center. We do have an underutilized Atlantic City International Airport. You have on the base the air marshals, the Coast Guard, you know, some entities out there that you really have the ability to work with. And of course, one of the most important, the 177th Fighter Wing with our F-16s right here, literally 10 minutes from where we sit, our F-16s, which are the primary uh, defense base for the East Coast from New York all the way down to D.C. And so we're able through the National Aviation Research Technical Park and the next development to be able to leverage some of the assets we already have here and really position ourselves for opportunities going into the future, which is what this is all about. And that's awesome. Again, diversification of jobs and uh, investors and businesses and whatnot coming into the area. Uh, we touched on it a little bit earlier, and there's a couple more phases possibly to come out there. I mean, we want to fill that second one, of course, and get it done, but there's interest as well as putting uh, different phases in there? There is, and uh, seven buildings total is development, so this will be building number two. You know, and things in aviation are changing, of course, all the time. The technology is changing so much. So they did a drone demonstration with the groundbreaking the other day, which was great. They actually had a drone up in the air, and they were videoing the groundbreaking and the ceremony, and they had it live streaming right to the uh, TV that was right there. So some really cool technology that they were utilizing there. But then, you know, the ability to have these unmanned aerial vehicles, mm -hmm. similar to drones that can kind of take off like helicopters, you know, possibly take you from the airport right over to Atlantic City to the casinos. You know, this technology is coming and we're hoping, I think we will be, you know, the premier entity doing the research and the testing and making sure we're getting these facilities done. And so I think the future is very, very bright as it relates to aviation in the area. Love it. And a little less uh, important than what you were just speaking of, but still important when we talk about the 177th. I mean, we just recently had the air show again. Them being close to us right here and throughout the East Coast, so important. It's unbelievable. And, right. then, you know, the fact that they can uh, go up there and scramble those F-16s literally in right. 10 minutes, we had an opportunity uh, to do the uh, the tour of the base and watch them do one of their practice runs to start scrambling the F-16s and so they're in their barracks. Right. You know, the alarm goes off and they're scrambling out with all their gear and everything, getting in the cockpit and literally from 10 minutes from when the alarm went off to the, when they're up in the air is how long it takes and then they can get anywhere on the East Coast so quickly. And so, you know, to have that facility here that some people don't even know about is really pretty remarkable. They do a fabulous job. Uh, with what they do and of course you know those f-16s <laughs> are pretty yeah. pretty cool to watch and you see them take yeah. off you see them land it's uh, pretty neat to see so it is cool that we have those kind of facilities here and have an opportunity to be able to do the tours to take a look at that stuff and i'm going to go a bit further i mean it's not part of our bullet points but when you say learning about it i know me as as a kid a hundred years ago uh you know we didn't really know what was going on there you know for our students in Atlantic County, just to get them to get out there. And they probably do it. I'm not sure if they do. Is that something that something we could work on or it's been worked on already? Yeah, I think they do. I mean, uh, ACIT specifically okay. is doing some aviation related stuff. So I think they have an interconnection kind of with the NARTP certainly, and then to the FAA and the 177th. So I think that relationship is getting worked out. And I think Stockton actually has some, you know, programming now related to aviation that kids can get involved in, which is great. You know, to the extent we can get kids involved. They have some simulators out at the NARTP. We had an opportunity to um, do the F-16 simulator when we were out there. So they actually have two of them. I don't right. know how much I can say, but they have two of them. You get to actually fly the F-16s. It's kind of this wow. simulator right over kind of our area right here. And so I was able to buzz over my house and Claire was in it. Claire was in the other simulator. I was in the one I actually shot her down. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you can do that stuff here. And they yeah. are doing, you know, they're doing that kind of research and mm. testing and training right here, literally within 10 minutes of where we are right so now. So it isn't all kissing babies, knocking on doors, shaking hands, isn't it? Right. Once you're there, you get to have a little fun. 
on and, and just see how important what is going on over there. It is, and that's the one thing you've heard me say because we've done this and done the radio. Yeah. I always try to make sure that I'm not commenting on things that I haven't experienced firsthand. So rather than being someone who just you know shouts from the rooftops about whatever, I want to go see things, and I want to see them for myself and talk to the people there myself. So you know, I always try to do that, get as much experience as you possibly can so that you're more educated you know, and better able to do the job. Right. That's uh, so cool. Listen, let's shift gears a little bit, go over to Atlantic City. I know there's some AC fatigue, but I think it's getting a little bit better in that sense uh, in Trenton as well uh, so far. Boardwalk, I, it's so important. I mean, I touched on the, uh, uh, the air show. It's always a, 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 an awesome visual for me just to jump on top of whether it's the Caesars Pier or one of the high rises and get a picture of that boardwalk and beach the way it looks. Some uh, money, some funding coming to the boardwalk. What do we say about that? Any uh, progress being made? Yeah, absolutely, Mike. So, of course, it was $100 million that was put into the budget for the boardwalk replenishment fund statewide. Um, but the governor came to Atlantic City to sign the legislation, so we thank him for coming to Atlantic City. He was able to participate in the bill signing. Uh, when he actually signed the legislation, put it into effect. Um, so I was there with Governor Murphy, and I expect that everything I'm hearing, you know, the applications are due by the end of the month, and then we'll hear by the end of the year, but I expect Atlantic City is going to get probably about half of the $100 million. And so you're going to see some significant investment into the boardwalk, obviously the oldest boardwalk in the world. Right. You know, what makes us different from any other gaming jurisdiction, that beach, the boardwalk, the ocean, the geography is different than anywhere else. And so seeing the governor and the state and you know us having the ability to work with them on the boardwalk fund to see that reinvestment into Atlantic City is wonderful and you know Atlantic City the numbers are are doing better so you know online gaming sports betting you know doing very very well the brick and mortar the return for, uh, of people coming to the city lagging a little bit behind but still getting better so i think as we get further away from the pandemic you know and, and people feel more comfortable traveling and getting back out there we're seeing increased uh, activity and people coming to the city which is of course a great thing for everyone around here uh, we love it listen and one of the things i'll give a shout out to mayor small and his administration back when that crazy 2020 when that happened he kept the boardwalk open and i thought that was cool and for the governor i get to see him every once in a while when he does come into town which is more than i thought jogging on the boardwalk and whatnot. So maybe he wants to get some of those nails nailed down. Uh, so it's, it's no, but we definitely need that because we got about a minute here, Vince. That street, because it is a street, it's the first of its kind, the longest of its kind. And you can fact check that. Not you, I know you know, but you can. But, you know, talk, you know, we got about 30 seconds for this segment here. The importance, again, that's a street. Yeah, it is. And, it, you know, so much activity and so much, uh, you know, spin-off economic activity for the merchants, for everything right. going on in the city. It is just a great amenity, something that we have to invest in. Make sure we're keeping up uh, on the repair of the boardwalk and then the lighting of the boardwalk, you know, safety of the boardwalk. And so that is critical going forward. Hey, Senator Vince Palestina, thank you so much. Stick right where you're at. We're going to be right back. Stick around. The Mike Lopez Show will be right back with more from today's guest, Senator Vince Palestina. Welcome back to the show. We are with today's guest, Senator Vince Palestina, New Jersey, Legislative District 2. Senator, so we were talking about the boardwalk, uh, one of the great pleasures I had. Uh, been in Atlantic City full time now, about 15 years, living on the boardwalk or by the boardwalk. Uh, was that, I want to say about 2018, the North End got completed, uh, beautiful jetties. And one of the things that I started seeing more than people just riding bike and whatnot, families out there, you know, the jetties, fishing, that sort. Touch on that a little bit as well, please. Yeah, it's fabulous. Just a, a huge part of the future for Atlantic City, obviously. When you see the redevelopment of the boardwalk, redevelopment of that whole area and creating an opportunity for families to be out there, you know, the miniature golf plays, right. now the showboat's kind of up in that end with Lucky Snake and all that stuff. And there's so much more to do up there now. And, you know, some fabulous areas for redevelopment, some blighted areas there that can be redeveloped, some vacant areas. That really presents such a tremendous opportunity, whether it's, you know, some residential redevelopment, some of the amenities for families like we see there. I think you're going to see some great things at the north end of the city of Atlantic City coming soon. So it's a great area and anything we can do to create more of a family atmosphere and more activity is good for the entire city. 
Yeah, love it. And as you said, to piggyback and not to repeat, but whether it's North Beach mini golf, again, um, uh, AC Hot Bagels, even to go with that, just seeing some of these businesses and what they've done over at the uh, Showboat Hotel Resort, now they're calling it, yeah. you know, with the, like you said, Island Water Park, $100 million plus, 100,000 square feet, uh, Lucky Snake claiming the largest in the world, you know, and it, it is beachfront. Families coming in, again, we're touching on it, it's so important. We love our casinos. Uh, the food, the employee, the amount of employees they employ, the shows, and, and that's where, but again, diversification. I mean, that's what it's all about. Uh, I don't think Atlantic City is ever going to be family, 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 all right? Three families there. But it's, you know, needs to uh, make that swing, that pendulum. Definitely does, and we've been talking about it for a long time. Yeah. But, you know, the gaming, we've done very, very well with gaming and tourism. It's been, you know, a great thing for, obviously, our region. But there's so much gaming competition now. Right. You know, you're not. You'll see some expansion. You'll see some reinvestment into the properties to, you know, expand gaming opportunities. But you're not going to see a whole lot of new hotels at this point. We need to diversify and we need to create opportunities for families. And I think when you think of that, you know, the North Beach area, and then you think about Gardner's Basin. If you mm. go a little bit to the west, um, just fabulous opportunities. That entire north end of the city with great views. You know, great sunsets if you're going yeah. looking out the other way, and it's just going to be something that is going to be tremendous for the entire region. So, right. really think that's going to be very important going forward. You know, the, just the um, ability to bring more people here that are not just focused on gaming, but are focused on other things outside of gaming. Right. Guys, you know, guys can go play and play blackjack, and right. and then there's <laughs> stuff for everyone else, to, else do. to do. Yeah. yeah, and you know, great sunrises as well. And I know you know that. Sit on the stoop out there many, many, many mornings, and just check it out. Get the head right and whatnot. Listen, diversification, we just touched on it. Does it occur? Diversification, Atlanta County economy. So, I mean, jump in just, it. That is, uh, you know, it's really been our focus over the first two years. Mike, uh, in addition to getting to a lot of these people in place um, to improve law and order with the prosecutor. But really, it's been about, you know, my kids are now 18 and 17. I have twins that are 17, so I have three kids that are, you know, one is now a freshman in college, two are juniors in high school. And I was looking at this and saying, you know, we need more opportunities for them. I want them to be able to come back here and I want them to be able to start their families here and start their careers here. And so that was really what I have focused on. And I think you look at four main components that we have been focused on over the first two years here. Obviously tourism, you know, we're never going to forget the tourism industry and the gaming industry. So critical to the region. We're going to keep making the investments into the boardwalk and into the industry. We have some critical pieces of legislation we have to deal with, you know, over the next couple of years with the tourism uh, um, district, uh, the pilot, you know, the, the takeover, quote unquote, or partnership, whatever you want to call it, and then the internet gaming where, you know, we were going to get a 10-year extension of internet gaming. They tried to take it to two. We got it back to five, but five isn't enough. If people are going to make investments and improvements in their property, we need a longer horizon of five years. And so we have some key things that we have to do for the tourism industry over, you know, when we get back to Trenton. But then beyond gaming, you know, we talked about some of these kind of key components. Stockton University, when you think about, you know, the southern end of the island and the development of Stockton University, uh, just has transformed that southern end of the island. When you go in along Albany Boulevard, and there's another lot there for development um, that is going to be a key part of the future that we're going to talk about how, what is best to go there. And Stockton is currently, you know, going out to an RFP to get somebody engaged to try to figure out what will be best. Uh, for that future development, but when you think about the Stockton campus here, Stockton Atlantic City, uh, really important to our growth as a region to make the investments into Stockton to create more opportunities for kids to get educated here, um, but then to have opportunities after they get educated if they want to stay here. It's a great area, as you know, right. to, to live, work, play, as you say all the time. Love and it. so Stockton is really key to what we have uh, been trying to do, and we got the most record money in history of Stockton in this last budget. Uh, Atlantic Care, you know, another huge anchor for the region. Again, uh, campus in Atlantic City, campus in Galloway, similar to, was similar to Stockton. And so the other thing we did was get the redistricting done. So Galloway and Atlantic City are both in Legislative District 2, which is going to be key. Because when you think about Stockton having campuses in both areas, Atlantic Care having campuses in both areas, it's natural for Galloway to be back in Legislative District 2 when they are this year. So. But Atlantic Care, we just, through the last state budget, got a $10 million investment for some of the construction right here at the campus in Galloway, which they are expanding and um, creating opportunities for suites 
after they dealt with the pandemic, they recognized they didn't have enough individual rooms for people. You know, the pandemic was tremendously challenging from a healthcare perspective. So they're embarking on an $87 million expansion here in Galloway, which we were able to get them some funding for uh, to really create a situation where, you know, you have suites, you have individual rooms. If we ever have to deal with another pandemic, they'll be in a position to be able to do that. But the, you also have the trauma center in Atlantic City, you know, a fabulous institution right here in our area uh, that we are able to work with and invest in and hopefully uh, put them in a better position to be a bigger part of the future. So tourism, Stockton, Atlantic Care with, from a healthcare perspective, and then the aviation we talked about, aviation, you know, the airport, the aviation district area uh, is gonna be really the fourth pillar. And so I think we're gonna be able to create an opportunity where you can get educated here, have opportunities here. Stockton actually has that live, work, learn program where you can live right on campus in AC and you can work at either one of the casinos or Spencer Gifts or one of these other you know, entities. You can stay right here and hopefully we're um, creating opportunities long-term for people to be able to live here. You know, the kids get, uh, we, we get, we knock them a little bit now. You know, I guess as you get older, you know, it's not the same, but you know what? I give them a lot of credit for anybody to be able to get a degree living on the boardwalk Having that beach right there and everything that we have around us, I give, you know, it takes a lot to do, but moving forward. But the, my point in bringing that up, uh, live on the, uh, the down beach side of Atlantic City, being able to wake up each day, whether it's uh, getting a coffee, bike ride, or whatever it may be, Stockton University, the university district, seeing the signs on the, uh, the poles, seeing the students, again, just walking across the street, it has totally, totally, 100%, I know you touched on it, change that and I don't think some people realize that when they come in because I know a few of my friends I bring in for a show or whatnot we go to a, a dinner like what is that I mean but that is so important to make that area uh, friendly for the families and the students and whatnot and the residents as well Absolutely, and that's really has been key, and you know, that's one of the key ways you get the city turned around is you have more activity out on the streets from students, from people that are patronizing the facilities, and we want to do more with that area. So fabulous now, you know, totally transform that southern end, but we want to do more from a retail perspective, you know, the Lot 21 development, actually get more activity, and really focus on how do we get residential redevelopment, you know, specifically along the beach. It is amazing to me. They have some of those areas with parking lots and other facilities that are just kind of sitting there when you could have beachfront property. And once you get people living there that take pride in their homes and, you know, their home ownership, you're going to have more activity and, and more of a sense of community and more, you know, help from a public safety perspective just simply because you have more people out on the streets, you know, walking around and being seen. And to your point right there with some of the businesses that just come into town, Down Beach by Stockton University, the Good Dog AC, Rife, uh, a few uh, bodegas and Boom Market expanding their uh, supermarket out there. But again, so important. And Atlantic Care you touched on a little bit. That addition too, a, a huge addition. I know we're out here in Galloway as well, but will there be any more Atlantic Care, do you think, in the city? Or and absolutely. just touch on that new one. Yeah, absolutely. So the one in Galloway is underway, and I, they have some property right next to them. I think CRDA owns part of the property. There's some private ownership in a couple of the other lots, but they are absolutely going to be looking at future development in Atlantic City and expansion. They need to, they're going to look to expand as well, you know, create more opportunities for people here. I think Michael Charlton, you know, congratulate him on becoming the CEO of Atlantic Care. Local guy like you and me, been here for a long time, you know, different industry, but, you know, another local guy who knows the people here, has had relationships here, now the CEO of Atlantic Care, and I think that is going to portend for great things in the future uh, because they are going to look to expand. It's not something that, you know, necessarily is done in the past, but now they are really going to focus on that, and that's going to be great for the area. I just recently had him on the radio show, Michael Charlton, uh, the new head man over there at Atlantic Care, and he spoke about what the importance of that building and here as well in Galloway, but also community, 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 and talking about community, uh, just to pivot a little bit here, Anchor, let's talk about some of the stuff that we can do uh, for, you know, reaching out to your office. Uh, that Anchor program, I mean, huge. I think people were surprised when they started seeing what was happening to their checking accounts and uh, what they got in the mail. 
Yeah, that's one of the, we always want to get the word out, Mike, and we thank you for any opportunity to go on the radio, go on the TV program, to just try to get the word out. First, I mean, our office is your office, you know, all the taxpayers' office. You pay for the office. We have staff in the office, and I have said to everybody, if you need help with anything, you know, it can be a state issue, it can be a local issue, it could be a county issue, you know, DMV, federal, we'll go to Congressman Van Drew and get assistance if we need. Anyone who needs any assistance with any topic, we're either able to help you in our legislative office or we will get you positioned and pointed in the right direction to get assistance. So anybody out there who's struggling, challenged, needs some help, feel free to reach out to our office. Anchor specifically, you know, you and I have talked, property taxes, biggest impediment, you know, we have in New Jersey, whether you are somebody who wants to start a career here, you know, you want to remain in your home or you want to retire here, we have got to get the property tax situation under control. First step, I think, was Anchor, which Anchor gives you up to $1,500 if you're a homeowner, up to $450 if you're a renter, up to certain income thresholds. We didn't see everybody take advantage of it. So we only saw last year 50 or 60% of the state population in New Jersey use it. So we're trying to get the word out. It's, uh, the program has been re-upped with this current budget. The money is there. It's your money. You know, you're paid your property taxes. It's your money. We want to assist you getting your money back, at least a portion of it. So, you know, anybody who has got any questions about these property tax rebate programs or trying to access the Anchor program, call our office. We absolutely will get you the help you need on that. Make sure, you know, you get the $1,500 or the $450 directly into your bank account. And we're about out of time, but I want to say thank you for putting that out there. Because a lot of folks, they do. They spin their wheels. They don't know where to go or what to do or nobody's going to answer. But I've uh, personally seen what you and folks, uh, Claire and Don and some of the others do. You know, if you can't find, if I don't know a guy, I know a guy, right? I mean, and you can help the folks out here and it's very important. And I don't know too many people who don't need uh, $1,400 or whether it's 450 or whatnot. So folks, I, I encourage you to make sure you reach out to his office. Listen, I want to thank you for coming on out. And uh, just taking the time, I mean, no, it's a busy time for you at this time uh, in October, the craziness that goes on during election time and campaigning. We appreciate what you do and Claire and Don and all the others, because I believe that anyone who puts their self out there like a book, you know, uh, it, it, you deserve a lot. I think you're crazy. But I think you're good crazy because we are blessed here in Atlanta County. And I mean that when I say that, Senator. Last word to you. Well, thanks, Mike. I really appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, we got into this just to help people. And so really uh, happy we're in a position to try to help people because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So this is crazy time. Nobody likes this time. You know, we, we can't wait for this to be over. But, you know, we're doing it for a reason. We're doing it for a purpose. And the purpose is to really make uh, investments, improvements into our community, into our region, and uh, help people who need help. And so... Again, thank everybody for giving me the opportunity. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Hopefully, I'm still there after this uh, election, but we'll see what happens. Senator Vince, I want to thank you again for coming out. Appreciate you jumping into the campus. Thanks again to Senator Vince Palestina for taking the time to be today's guest. We'll be right back after this break. Hey, folks, it's our belief here at the Mike Lopez TV show that you, the viewers and our guests, bring the show to life. Thanks to each and every one of you for joining us. To learn more about AC Mike, go to acmikenj.com, on Facebook at AC Mike, Mike Lopez, and Live, Work, Play AC. On Instagram, you could find me at AC Mike NJ. If you enjoyed watching today's show, you can also listen to my radio show on WOND Radio, 1400 AM, 92.3 FM, and WONDRadio.com on the World Wide Web. Monday through Friday, noon till 2 p.m. Remember to live, work, play AC, and I'll see you on 48.